Jessica Valenti has a book called He's a Stud, She's a Slut, and 49 Other Double Standards Every Woman Should Know. And she has 50 in here, and I'm going to read some of them because they seem obvious, but, but we sort of take, them, take it for granted. We, we accept a lot of double standards without thinking, okay? Here's something to think about. He's a Romeo. She's a stalker. A guy throws rocks at a girl's window in the middle of the night. He won't take no for an answer. He must date her. He serenades her, shows up at her classes, waits at her car. These could be scenes from a burgeoning romance or a stalker gone mad. American culture doesn't differentiate, really. If a woman does these things, however, she's always a stalker, a crazy ex-girlfriend, a psycho. Shit, women are called stalkers for even daring to call a guy a couple times. Never mind that the majority of stalking is done by men and the majority of victims are women. When it comes to romance, women are the stalkers and men are just romantic. According to the Department of Justice, one out of every 12 women, one out of every 45 men, will be stalked in her lifetime. Whether it's men or women who are the victims of stalking, it's overwhelmingly men who are actually doing the stalking, almost 90%. Given the statistics, it's pretty ridiculous that there's still a double standard here. When a man stalks, it's often portrayed as just a joke or romance, but almost anything a woman does will be labeled as stalking or pathetic. You need not look much farther than Hollywood for the stereotypical crazy female. Think of women stalkers in movies. Glenn Close in Fatal Attraction, of course, is the most famous. There's also Demi Moore in Disclosure, Rebecca de Mornay in The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, Jennifer Jason Lee in Single White Female, or Kathy Bates in Misery. What most of these characters have in common, besides the crazy, is that they're sex-crazed, single women who just can't wait to get their hands on someone else's man. Even funnier, women stalker characters are often presented in direct opposition to traditional femininity. For example, Glenn Close in Fatal Attraction is the crazy-haired businesswoman, while Michael Douglas' wife is the charming stay-at-home mom. Same thing in Disclosure. In Single White Female, one of the first signs that something is amiss with Jennifer Jason Lee's character is when a shocked, shocked Bridget Fonda catches her masturbating. You know, because only psychos do that. It's so predictable, really. <clears throat> really, women could be good little girls or crazies. This kind of strong women are stalkers attitude is also pretty standard in hetero dating rituals. If you call more than a couple times, you're stalking a guy. If he calls, he's just persistent. At the end of the day, we're so invested in a romantic ideal that sees men as the pursuers in a relationship that anything that deviates from that is seen as not so. And naturally, anything that holds up that man-chasing woman model is seen as great, even when it's criminal. Uh, in 2007, I wrote a post on my blog, Feministing.com, about a creepy shirt Walmart was selling that said, some call it stalking, I call it love. The lettering was scrawled across the shirt in what looked like dripping blood. Classy, huh? The shirt, the shirt which was available in the men's section caught the eye of a stalking victim in North Carolina who complained to the store. She wondered what kind of shirt would be next. Some say it's rape, I call it hot sex, or some call it domestic violence, I say I'm just teaching her a lesson. In the comments section, I was surprised to find how many people, mostly men, thought the shirt was simply funny. There was no larger issue there. Let me tell you something, it's not funny. Even I was stalked once, and it was one of the scariest things I've ever experienced. The thought of this guy still creeps me out so much, frankly, that despite my being a big fan of writing anything and everything about my life, I would never go into the details of the situation, because I'm terrified he might read the book and take that as a sign that I'm interested. So, what to do? Take stalking seriously, for one. It's not a joke. It's not romantic. And to be candid, it's not really women who are doing it. I think the bigger issue is trying to dismantle the idea that romance relies on women being chased, women resisting a persistent guy and eventually giving in. That's called rape culture, folks. What's so bad about a romantic ideal where both parties involved are equally excited about the prospect of dating each other? Sounds pretty reasonable to me.